This is an exclusive excerpt from the Stuff File program with Peter Anthony Holder. On last week's Stuff File program, we talked to actress Robin Weigert about the audiobook she recently narrated called The Whip. It's a book that's written by Karen Condazian. Well, I thought it would be interesting to talk to the woman who brought Charlotte Charlie Parkhurst, a real woman from the Old West, back to life. So, Karen Condazian is on the line with us right now from California. Hi, Karen. Hi, how are you? I'm fine. Thanks for being on the program with us. <laughs> one, of the, one of the questions I asked uh, Robin when she was on, on last week's program was the fact that you, Karen, who've written this book, you yourself are a classically trained actress. Uh, was it difficult to wrestle away the idea that maybe you wouldn't narrate the role? Um, you know, I actually, for fun, tried at the studio before we found Robin to see if it was something that I could do because you know something, it isn't just about being a, a wonderful actress that Robin is. There has to be, a, and she, she, I think she explained it really well, you have to have this kind of uh, like juggling in your head many characters at the same time um, where, you know, you're not Minnie Mouse. Like, what I mean by that is you're not doing uh, 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 animated sounds like little cartoons. You're actually, from the heart, speaking as a human being. And to do that so quickly is a very difficult task. And it requires, um, I think it requires a certain kind of actor person, you know, who's multi, multi, they can do multi things quickly. And, and I found that that was difficult for me. I could do if it was just one person, you know, speaking like Charlie. Um, but boy, Robin is good at that. And she's really good at accents because there's so many accents in the book, of course. Mm. Now, so no, to answer your question in a very long way, <laughs> I, I tried it and it was something that really wasn't my taste. And um, we were, and so I told the producer, and he said, well, we'll find someone. And we were blessed, of all people, Calamity Jane on Deadwood. I mean, there she was, and she was delighted to do it, and she was extraordinary. Now, what brought you to the story of Charlie Parkhurst in the first place? Who was a, a fascinating woman who spent 30 years living as a man, and yes. she was a renowned stagecoach driver for Wells Fargo during the California Gold Rush. What brought uh, the attention of her to you? Well, when I was a girl, I was reading, of all things, Cosmopolitan magazine, trying to find a man. <laughs> And um, there was this great article about women of the Wild West. And one of the people that they wrote about was her. And I remember being astonished and having the same questions, uh, uh, what you just said, of like, how in God's name would a woman carry off? I mean, this is the thing. These stagecoach drivers hung out together all the time. They slept together. They ate together. They, excuse me, peed together. And, you know, um, for, <laughs> for her to be able to, you know, carry this 30 years off with no one having a clue, um, it, 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 it haunted me. And I thought, first of all, she intrigued me. And then I thought, I, I wanted to answer those questions about how she must have done this. I mean, she didn't have a beard, you know, obviously. Uh, I found out, of course, a lot of those uh, stagecoach drivers had dirty faces. So probably part of her getting ready in the morning was to put dirt on her face. Um, and so I had to find out the answers. And it took six years and 27 drafts to find those answers. And, and it, 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 she was such a fascinating woman. And, of course, you and Robin talked about that I bring up in the book that there were other women who did the same thing. Um, there were there were a couple of women who fought on the Confederate side in the Civil War as men, and then they went home and had three children. I mean, that's the truth. It's fascinating stuff. Now you 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 spent six years, as you say, yes, delving into this story. Um, you knew a little bit about her, obviously, because you went looking for the information. But what was the biggest surprise for you in what you found out about her? I went to Watsonville, California, where she's buried, in, of all things, the Odd Fellow Cemetery. <laughs> and um, I interviewed a woman 
who is probably knows more about Charlie Parkhurst than anyone. She, unfortunately, she's passed on now. But um, I interviewed her, and um, she had done a lot of research in Watsonville, talking to older folks about their great grandparents who knew her, and so on. <clears throat> and so, one of the interesting things was that her middle name is Darkey. It's on her tombstone, Charlie Darkey Parkers. And of course, we know that in during that period of time, Civil War, Darkies were black. They, that was another term for black. Right. So what I did, and we, and there was some kind of little rumor that maybe she had been with a a black man, a, 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 a runaway slave, or something. So you know what I did was I took all the room. I mean, I took all the facts and put those in the book, and then I took the rumors. And I wrote out the rumors through my imagination. And so the book on the title, on the cover, it says it's uh, inspired by a true story, a novel. So I novelized part of it through, but most of the things I novelized were rumors that have already been out there. I mentioned in the introduction, or I mentioned early, that uh, that uh, you yourself are a, a classically trained uh, actress, and you've been acting, basically, since you were eight years old so yes. so so what was it like for you changing gears to go from acting to to writing <laughs> um well I, i'm still right i'm still acting uh thank god i play a lot of italian moms and greek moms and psychics and gypsies um uh so but um i sort of like feel like i'm both still you know i'm a writer and an actor but, you know, I have this theory that actors, uh, if they had have the stamina and the willpower and the courage, that they would be wonderful writers because we do everything that a writer does, only even more. Um, you know, we have to create backstories for our characters. And, and, you know, one of the things I found, a great tool, if anyone out there is, wanting to write is to take some acting classes even if you've never ever done it because um, it teaches you to access feelings and you write and once you bring up a feeling you can write through those feelings a scene and that's why gratefully people have told me that the book is very moving and emotional to them because that's what I was doing and that's what actors learn to do they are athletes of the emotions and in a way, that's what a writer needs to be as well. Um, and I think it's a great asset to to have the gifts that my training as an actor, because it really helped me in detail, in the sensory things. We we're always looking in our work, you know, the smell, the taste, the touch, whatever. And so it was very easy for me to visualize and. You and and feel those things and be in that world. Well, I was about to ask, as an actor, does does uh, when you sit down to write, does it play in your mind like a play as as you write? Yes, yes, exactly right. Um, because as an actor, again, you take a character and you you fantasize, you improvise in your mind, and with the actor, other actors sometimes even. Um, situations that are not even in the film or play. And that's what actors are really good at, and that's what I was able to do because of my training. As a writer, I would just sit and, you know, when I created, um, I don't want to spoil the story, but, you know, there's the, the awful scene in it where there's that awful death that happens in it. And, you know, I actually was part of it. I could visualize it. I could, you know, I could. All my senses were working, and then I would, I would write it out. You know, um, uh, one of the other things I'd like to say to any writers out there is, 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 is you have to just kind of, excuse the word, vomit all your feelings and everything out, and then later, you know, you can edit and, and you can refine. But, you know, you have to just kind of like, just let it all go. And anything that comes into your mind, the craziest, wildest, sexiest, most violent, whatever comes into your mind, and then you edit. But I think a lot of people get stuck because they're trying to make the first sentence perfect. <laughs> when you're writing characters for a novel, 
um, again, someone with your extensive acting background, who've worked with a lot of great actors through the course of your career, do you envision certain actors in the in in roles that you're writing? Do you do you see actors as you write the story? You're absolutely right. I think it's secretly maybe all all writers write that way. Um, even if they don't think of it as a film, you do, or maybe a, a someone you know. But for instance, the the character of Lee in the book, um, I always had a crush on James Dean and. I wanted to make the character very much like James Dean in that, 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 you know, a wounded soul with a wounded child who lived inside, but at the same time kind of sexy and interesting and, and fascinating to all women and men, may I add. Um, and so I did, you know, really think of James Dean when I, when I wrote the character. And of all people who read the script at one point, not script, sorry, the book. Then there is a script, by the way, that I wrote. But the book, um, James Franco, who I did James Dean with on TNT. And in fact, that was the beginning of his career. He won the Emmy for playing James Dean. So it was really interesting, you know. Um, but yes, and I have in my mind lots, each, I do have actors almost in a way. Um, because it helps you. It's another image uh, um, that you can play with. Um, writing is just, you know, it's such an extraordinary, but it's very difficult too because you have to um, keep yourself um, imagining. And the moment you stop imagining, you start getting into the, what is it, the left brain? Right. The left brain, which is, you know, uh, which is not imaginative and doesn't help you. You have to find your way into the right brain and stay there. And that's the hard part. The book is called The Whip by <laughs> Karen Condazian. And people can go to the website, which is karen-condazian.com. Uh, Karen, I thank you very, very much for taking the time to be on the program with us. I loved it. Thank you. Karen Condazian, author of The Whip. You can find the book at audible.com and also at amazon.com. And you can go to my website at thestufffile.com. Go to the What's On page for this show, which is show number 0183, and you'll find the links. You'll also find links to Karen's website. You've just heard an exclusive excerpt from the Stuff File program with Peter Anthony Holder. To hear any or all of the full hour-long shows, visit thestufffile.com. Stuff is spelled S-T-U-P-H. That's thestufffile.com. A presentation of Flying Fish Communications.